we had to come up with different air handling systems, different safety systems, because gasoline vapor is low, hydrogen vapor is obviously high, and then this ridiculously slow door uh, represents, um, it's an air-driven motor, so there's no electric spark and so forth. So these are the types of things you go through when you design a facility for hydrogen and gasoline all in the same uh, area. What I want to do is talk about what is a fuel cell. These are the cells. Okay, so this represents a cell, which is a plate and a membrane electrode assembly. And then they're stacked together and compressed. And so by having some, a technology um, in this configuration, we produce 110 cells will produce about 100 volts of electricity. Um, to be exact, it's 0.6 volts per cell under full load and around 1 volt per cell under nominally idle conditions. So this stack has 440 cells in it. And this is the stack that's in the fuel cell focus, which we have 30 vehicles in the field today that have demonstrated a little over 600,000 collective miles of experience. So this is, again, four rows, one, two, three, four, 110 cells per row. Now, the way a fuel cell works is, first of all, you have to have a plate, a plate so that you can have a way to manage coolant. So there's actually little tiny channels in between two plates that are bonded together where coolant passes through, and that takes away the heat. So that's one of these three openings is the coolant. The other opening is hydrogen, and then the third one is the oxygen from air. So hydrogen would, say, be on this side, and oxygen from air would be on this side, and they react with a membrane assembly, and I'm not going to go much deeper than this, so if I'm losing you, uh, don't worry, I'm going to stop here, um, is that the hydrogen and the oxygen have to react on both sides of this membrane to create the electron going around the motor and the proton going through the membrane. So hydrogen is made up of one proton and one electron. The proton goes through this, this device, this membrane here, and the electron goes around the motor and meets the proton on the other side, makes water. Only an explanation of what we're doing with this type of stack technology, which is uh, made by Ballard, our partner in Vancouver. Use of the vehicle, it's 65 kilowatt fuel cell stack combined with about a 20 kilowatt battery uh, provide all of the power. So the battery is used to help uh, launch, it's also used to start the vehicle to recover energy, it's a nickel metal hydride battery. And by the way, this shares technology with the hybrid escape in that it's exactly the same cell, but they're both uh, packaged differently for the different vehicle configurations. We have a, a hydrogen storage tank in the trunk. We normally have a piece of trim there, but we removed that so that you can see what the hydrogen tank looks like. Obviously, we compromised the packaging of the vehicle because we haven't left enough room for luggage. And so that's one of the Achilles heels of the hydrogen vehicle is getting enough range and figuring out where to put the hydrogen storage so that we don't impact things like crash and so forth. Uh, this is about a 200 mile range solution in this vehicle, uh, 5,000 PSI. Well, what is the percentage of time the customers can use the vehicle? And it's 97%, which is a remarkable achievement for a new technology first program out of the chute. So we're quite pleased with what we accomplished on demonstrating the viability of the powertrain. We then moved toward solving some practical problems. So the first problem was range. 200 miles range is just a little better than the 100 mile range story. And we all know that the electric car never took off because of rain. A, a chassis me, that is located underneath the Ford Explorer. So we have two of these Explorers. One is the silver one over here, and then there's a black one. This Explorer platform was packaged with one theme in mind, which is design the vehicle around the hydrogen storage problem. So we called it designed around hydrogen. This is what it takes to put equivalent of 10 gallons of gasoline in an Explorer. Now, I, I have uh, owned Explorers and easily 20 gallons is the, the fuel capacity of an Explorer. We're only putting around 10 gallons equivalent in the vehicle and we're able to take it 350 miles. So we can meet the range requirement. We did not compromise the packaging and one thing that I'll have you do later on is open the door of that Explorer and just see that we've maintained six passenger seating. The reality of a vehicle is that the center console designs and the front this is completely transparent. You don't even see the hydrogen tank intrusion. And in the rear, it's a, a bucket seat on each, either side with a console down the center. So, and then we were able to maintain the two seats in the rear. So we have a vehicle here which doesn't compromise packaging for the people, doesn't compromise cargo, and provides 350 miles range. So the first uh, time that was accomplished in any fuel cell vehicle that we know of. Uh, Same PSI. Hydrogen. Same PSI. Uh, no, this is 10,000 PSI, so that's a good question. So this moved on to the storage technology of 700 bar or 10,000 PSI. It's a plastic uh, liner with a carbon fiber wrap uh, called a Type 4 
technology. Now, the battery in this vehicle is in this blue box, and it's, again, uh, nickel metal hydride technology. It's providing just assist for launch and regen recovery and helping to start up. Uh, this uh, box in the rear is the electric motor with its inverter. We call it an IPT, or Integrated Powertrain. And it produces 130 kilowatts of uh, propulsion power and approximately 160% uh, of the torque of the motor in the focus. So it's more torque, double the power, in about the same package uh, using permanent magnet uh, technology. What does this weigh like this versus... Versus existing, a normal chassis? Versus existing chassis. Yeah, we, we add about 800 pounds of weight to a normal Explorer, almost as rapidly as, say, we have to compare that to, say, computers, like how laptops evolve, that's how fuel cells need to evolve, not that we do programs that last four or five years. And 10,000 uh, PSI, 700 bar, what uh, miles per, per kilogram do you get versus your 5,350 bar? Great question. 50 miles per kilogram on the Focus, 35 miles per kilogram on the Explorer. Now.